Hi folks, I'm Thomas Henson with ThomasHenson.com and today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. And so today we're going to be tackling the differences between a data scientist and a data engineer. Find out more right after this. So, do you want to become a data engineer or do you want to become a data scientist? So this is a question, and this is something we see a lot about, is, you know, all about the data scientist and, you know, big data and then data engineering, but what's the difference between the two roles, and why is it that since 2012, data scientists have been the sexiest career in IT, and there's been a lot of publicization about it, there's been a lot of information about it, you know, we're all talking about machine learning and smart cars and, you know, the battle between Tesla and Apple for, you know, machine learning engineers, data scientists, and, you know, how, how they can battle that out. But what about the data engineer, too, and kind of what are the differences? Well, I'll tell you, recently, you know, Information Weekly had a survey out there for 2018 and the highest paying salaries in IT. Data engineer came in at number five. The only other roles that were above the data engineer were all C-level positions. So think of your CIO, your CSO, your CTO. So data engineers, data engineers are getting a lot of love too, but what are the differences between those two roles? So we'll break it down, first jumping into what a data scientist does. So what does a data scientist do in their day-to-day -day work? Well, one of the things that they do is they evaluate data, right? So that's kind of a given, but how do they do that? So they use different algorithms, they look at different results from data. So say that we're trying to find out a way for you know a web application to have you know more users that are engaged with it so how do i create more engaging content for my users and for my customers and give them something of value well a data scientist would be able to take and look at different variables so maybe you know maybe we get in a room and maybe everybody kind of comes up with some variables and says okay you know how can we retain user retention right so does this piece of content work you know we've got some testing on this these other pieces here's some of our historical data and so the data scientists, what they'll do is they'll evaluate all those data points and tell you which ones are going to be the most relevant, right? And they'll do that by using algorithms, right? So they'll look and maybe they'll use, you know, SVD to find out, okay, which variables are going to make the most sense for us to have more engaging content, have a web application that, you know, makes users want to stay and, you know, engage with it longer. And so that's kind of where their role is. Now, they're not going to be the ones that are writing the MapReduce jobs or doing some of the Spark jobs. We really want them just evaluating the data and helping us, you know, build different data models that are going to give us the results we're looking for, right? So if we can just increase our user retention time or increase our engagement of our content, our web application is going to be more popular, right? So in, in, in our example, that's what we want. We want our data scientists that are, you know, really evaluating you know, finding correlations between data and also eliminating, eliminating correlations, right? So this data, you know, this variable that we predicted that we thought was going to be very, you know, very key to engaging for our web application for our users, it really doesn't make a difference. And so it gives our developers and our engineers and our product and marketing team, you know, things for them to look at and say, hey, these are the, these are the variables that we need to focus on. And this is what's going to make our web application, you know, give us the desired results we're looking for and, you know, increase that user retention time, increase the, you know, engagement, you know, for our users and our web application. So that's our data scientist. Now on the flip side, what is our data engineer going to do? So our data engineer, they're the ones that's going to say, you know, we've, we've got some, we've got this data here. We're moving the data maybe into our Hadoop cluster. So we're moving it into our Hadoop cluster or wherever we're storing it for analytics. And so they're the ones that are really moving, moving that data there. They're also writing those MapReduce jobs or those Spark jobs or doing the development portion of the big data, right? So our data scientists are over here saying, this, this is the data that I need. The data engineer saying, oh, we have the data here, you know, what kind of format, how should we clean the data, how fast do you need the data too, right? So, you know, is the, how much of speed is a concern for some of these variables and, you know, being able to fetter out some of the details and being able to give maybe, you know, maybe improve that product a little bit faster to get it to the users. And so that's where you're going to see the data, data engineer are also going to be the ones that are managing and configuring, you know, our Hive and H-based deployments and doing doing some of the uh, technical debt work that we've talked about before with, you know, making sure that we have a strategy for backup, making sure we have a strategy for high availability, right? So, you know, this, this product that we've got here for our web application, we want to make sure that, you know, we're still feeding our data in and our data models are feeding our data back to our data scientists 
but then we're also pushing out those results from what the data scientists have given us too. So you kind of see two distinct roles, right? So our data engineer, they're going to be involved in the tech. They're going to be the ones that are, you know, really building those systems out where our data scientists, they're involved with the data. They're, they're, they're involved with the technology as far as how to use the, you know, what tools are going to help them be able to parse out, use different algorithms and be able to say, you know, this, you know, this data point really makes a difference where this data, this other data point may not be making as much of a difference. And so it's gonna, they're gonna be using those tools for that. But basically what they're doing is they're involved in the data and you see the data engineer involved in the technology and implementing and, and kind of using that strategy. So I'm not saying one's better than the other one, but I may be a little bit biased because I'm a data engineer and you know, like data engineering, but two different skill sets, two very important skill sets, two amazingly great career choices right now in IT two of the high, probably highest paying individual contributor roles in IT right now. So you can't, can't go wrong either way. If you're looking for more tips and more information about being a data engineer, make sure you subscribe to this channel and find out more information about data engineers. We explore you know, how to do different things. If you have any questions like this, make sure you submit them. Big Data Big Questions, use the hashtag Big Data Big Questions on Twitter. Go to my website, thomashinson.com big questions, submit your questions there, put it in the comments below here. I'll answer it on YouTube uh, best I can. Uh, any, any questions like that, just get in touch with me. I'll answer them on here. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time.